what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, that was. I, we have never, <laughs> never before heard that. Okay. Hi. Ooh. Hello. Oh, welcome to So You Think You're Iconic. <laughs> the podcast that is being watched over by someone because yes. wow that was terrifying yeah our fbi agents decided to finally become part of this episode yeah so hi, hi nice frank. to have you here i nice to have I, you here i think your name is frank you're probably a frank so feels like a frank anytime in movies when they go to the fbi there's always one frank true your true. name is frank <laughs> so how was your week kelly it was pretty good pretty good i got to see you mm-hmm. and one of our other friends yesterday mm-hmm. it's really nice yes got to go to San Francisco. ate a lot of food <laughs> ate a lot of food so much food walked a lot yeah which made up for the food did it there I mean, a, I'd like to think so. There were a lot of donuts. There were a lot of donuts. There were a lot of donuts. And I mean, of, you only got one. And a lot of pasta. Yeah, lots of pasta. Well, for you, I didn't have pasta. Well, I did have your pasta. Yeah, you did have I pasta, didn't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't order pasta. I didn't order pasta. There we go. But I got me some. Uh, yeah, we went hiking yesterday. Hung out in San Francisco. Got some Italian food, got some donuts. Yummy. Got some coffee, went to the Palace of Fine Arts. Yeah. Where apparently everyone and their mother was taking pictures. Oh my gosh, yeah. There were two quinceaneras. There was a bunch of different like grad pics going on. And a wedding. (laughs) Yeah, and a wedding. Ridiculous. So we were really in the thick of it. Yeah. Um yeah, and so that was fun. And then I got mm-hmm. home and I had to watch this movie. And when I sat down, I was like, oh, I want to take off my contacts. And then realized I left Guys. my glasses in Kelly's car. And Kelly lives nowhere near me. Yeah. And in his words, I live in the middle of nowhere. She does live in the middle of nowhere. Let me tell you, okay, where she <laughs> lives, her main street is just full of fast food. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, courthouse, no small little cute boutiques and stuff. It literally is just a McDonald's, a Dutch Bros. Um, what else is over there? A Starbucks and a gas station. So the, the boutique stuff that you're looking for is, a, like, a couple miles after where you are. Miles? You yeah, like, like, two and a half miles from See, where she lives in the middle is. of nowhere. See? The middle of nowhere. I live okay, so you guys understand how in, in the middle of nowhere I live. There are still like ranches and farms out here. We have guys who own horses in one of our nearby neighborhoods. And yeah, I saw he a rides, horse on my way home. <laughs> yeah, he rides his horses to train them to not be like scared of cars. He like rides them on the main streets. There's a peacock that's always on the loose in the middle of the street. We I've had to wait for him a couple of times. Seriously. I'm not even lying right now. <laughs> now I, can I live start, in the middle of nowhere. Now I can start making fun of her about being a country folk. Yeah, I'm like, I'm some country hick. She's country folk. Just like my cousin Brandy, <laughs> who lives further into the valley. She's country folk as well. I know yeah. two I know I know a couple of people from the country now. <laughs> what the heck? Like, okay. like she didn't even live anywhere near like a grocery store like that was concerning to me who you no there was there was no grocery store within a mile of your house that was weird to me yeah we have a luckies and a raley's where it's like the luckies is like like, five minutes away so like three miles away no yeah stop no no, and I bet you it's not even in. I bet it's not in your city. Yes, I saw it is. That line was ridiculous. It's always ridiculous. I was not going to get that. I got Starbucks. Starbucks See, at never. least we have we have star we have two Starbucks and a Dutch Bros. Everywhere has Starbucks. Yeah. See, I'm not I'm not some country folk. 
e- even the, in the middle of nowhere, they have Starbucks. <laughs> when you're driving down the, what is it? The five to go to LA, you'll pass mm-hmm. by at least seven Starbucks. Like there are Starbucks everywhere. Don't feel special. Mm. I like where I live. Mm. It's nice. Uh, she has a very <laughs> nice house though. She yeah. a very nice house. Uh, okay, Kelly. <laughs> let's let's do this. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Tell me about <laughs> Clueless. So we start this movie with like um, early MTV esque like music video. We see Cher's life in LA, rich mm-hmm. teen life. Can't can't relate. Can't relate. And we have a voiceover from Cher saying that despite what we're seeing on screen, she actually has a totally normal life. Even though as she's getting ready while she's talking, she has a wardrobe that's controlled by a computer. Legendary. Her house is huge. Right. She has a huge house. She lives in Beverly Hills. She lives in Beverly Hills. Like normal to you is not normal. I I probably couldn't even drive in Beverly Hills. Mm-mm. Like that's how exclusive yeah. Beverly Hills is. Yeah, yeah. They take one look at me and be like, "Yeah, you don't you have don't enough here. money in your <laughs> bank account to even breathe in this area." <laughs> we learn that her dad is some scary litigator, and that Cher has to take care of her dad because it's just her and him, and he's had some like health scares, so she's the one that takes care of him. Um, he then tells her that her stepbrother Josh is going to come over for dinner that night and she's not happy about it. On her way to school, she drives very dangerously and illegally yeah. we found because a worse she only has a than, permit. We found a worse driver than Kelly. I am not a bad driver. Did you, guys, did you guys know Kelly can't parallel park? To the extent that we had to switch, I had to go into the driver's seat so that I could park because she doesn't know how to parallel park. <laughs> okay, I don't like driving in San Francisco anyway, she's but park- parallel she's been parking for like eight years. Yeah, but parallel, parallel parking, park. no matter where I am, even if it's on a desolate street and there's nobody like around to see me do it and I have to do it between two cars I will not because I just say it's so anxious about okay, parallel but, parking but here we go um she didn't need to parallel park between t- two cars she needed to parallel f- park between one car there was one car behind her and I was like go park right there but, it, but it was on a stop it was right by the stop sign all she had to do and- was back up but it was, I'd have to go forward into the busy street and then back up in front of everybody. That was not about to happen. She would have been fine. And then when we had to go around and I had to drive, we lost the spot. But we found another one. Ooh, yeah. We got lucky and found another one. I need, who else is out there that doesn't know how to parallel park? But yeah, she's 24 years feel, old and she can't me? parallel park. Do you feel for me? <laughs> I don't like parallel parking. It's no. not that hard. Abolish parallel parking. <laughs> anyway, enough about me not being able to parallel park. Uh, Cher goes to pick up her BFF, Dion. Uh, who she is friends with solely because they both understand what it feels like to have people be jealous of them. Same. We love a friendship built on (laughs) one common goal. (laughs) So they get to school and Dion is having problems with her boyfriend, Murray. Murray shows up and they argue and he accuses her of cheating because he finds some hair in his car. Mm. But she's got receipts, so she rips them apart because she doesn't wear polyester hair. (laughs) She's too expensive for that. We get another voiceover from Cher saying that she's not into high school boys because they're disgusting and they don't meet her level, which, you know what, good for you. You have a standard. She's 15. 16. She's 15. 16. She's not 16 until the end of the movie. She's 15. Okay. All right. Talking about, I don't date high school boys. Ma'am, go. She still watches cartoons. Ma'am, go sit down. How do I? Ma'am, you go sit down too. <laughs> <laughs> but I have my license. Okay. 
Yeah, you can't parallel park, but okay. Shut up. Okay. We see Cher is in debate class where she gives, you know what, an actually pretty good debate about um, the Haitians seeking refuge um, in the U.S. It was like on the surface. On the surface. It was a very surface level understanding of distribution yes. of wealth. Like very yes. surface level. Yeah. She was like, well, why can't we just make more room for them? And I was like, I like where you're going. Yeah. She had the right <laughs> idea. Yeah. But she didn't even call them the right name. She, they're yeah. Haitians. And she was like, the Hadians? <laughs> when you don't do the homework, but you have to bullshit your way through a presentation. <laughs> uh, yeah. We've all been there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know after how many that, book Mr. reports I've done that I didn't even read the books? That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. So after her... Very poor debate. Mr. Hall hands out grades for his class. Um, Travis tries to commit suicide because of uh, how oh, yeah. terrible it is. On the first floor. He tried to jump floor. out the window. Yeah. Wouldn't have gotten far. No. Um, I, I, like how the, I like how the teacher was like, not in this period. Not on my class. Right, right. <laughs> he was like, try next period. Not here. Like, that's somebody else's problem. It ain't yeah. gonna be mine. He's like, I do not want to fill out that paperwork. Right. He's like, I do not get paid enough to do this right now and we find out that Cher gets a C in this class and uh you know it kind of shows yeah and he must not grade on a curve because she seemed to be the only one that even tried yeah because yeah, no one else sure. in the class seems to even try at all yeah like maybe Amber if she was able to give her side of her debate but nobody was, else in that class was paying attention what was Amber's excuse she was like I can't argue with this because she's talking about parties <laughs> Yeah, that was literally it. She's all like, she didn't provide a good enough um, argument, so I can't counter. I'm like, mm, uh, that's, that's a yeah, it's an okay excuse. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's okay. So after that, Dion and Cher are on the phone, and um, they talk about their grades and how they are going to get them in trouble. After school, Cher gets home, and we learn from another voiceover that Cher's mom died from a routine liposuction. You know, like everyone does. Like everyone does. Oh, I almost said Ow. something really rude. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. I'm not going to say <laughs> it. <laughs> and she believes that her mom is still watching over her. Cher makes an outfit change and finds that Josh is in the kitchen. And they have some little sibling banter going on. Um, they are then called to dinner by Cher's dad. He talks to Josh about trying to get him into litigating and... He and Josh is like, no, I'm not going to look at that. Yeah, I'm going to look at environmental law first. And then he brings up Cher's grades. And Cher says that her grades aren't ready yet. And she says that she never accepts the first offer and she's going to negotiate because they are so low. If I went to my mom and told her my grades weren't ready yet, she would smack the hell out of me. Yeah. What do you mean they're not ready? <laughs> right, right. Are they not she printed on the paper? Like, right. <laughs> Right. She, my mom would be so suspicious. She'd be like, oh, so did you have to redo something or, or what? And right, I'm like, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so then Josh asks Cher how she's going to get her grades up. And she says she's going to do what she does every semester. We then see Cher going to her PE teacher and saying that she, giving her the excuse that an evil male broke her heart which makes the PE teacher change her grade from a C to a B. She then goes to Miss Geist and promises that she'll start a letter campaign to her congressman about violating the Clean Air Act. And then she gets to Mr. Hall and tries to convince her way to a better grade, but he's not moving on it. Cher says that she feels out of control and goes to the mall to help herself feel better. Dion and Cher are at the mall, and Cher is still mad that she couldn't get her grade in Mr. Hall's class but better, but a comment from Dion gives her an idea. And her idea is to get Mr. Hall laid, basically, because- Hey, I have a story. Okay. I have a story. So this isn't far-fetched, okay? Hear me out. In the sixth grade, we had a teacher. Do I remember his name? Yes, I will not say it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> He, he was an okay guy, but some days he would come in and he would be very happy. 
And so we came up with this little thing talking about how when he came in happy, he got laid that night. And we wholeheartedly believe it. Because because it all started because he came in happy one day after Valentine's Day. And we were like, oh, that's what's going on here. Really? Yes. So if your teacher is randomly happy one day, they might have got laid. Might have, yeah. Might have got laid. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can hook two teachers up, like, try it. <laughs> try it. You never so, know. You'll never know. You never know. So she says she wants to get him laid because he's 47 and in a thankless job. And you know what? That's sad. <laughs> so sad. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> but she says she runs into a problem because the school is dry on babes until she looks at Miss Geist and she's all like, oh, she's just as lonely as Mr. Hall. So she decides to set them up. So back in debate class, Mr. Hall is talking about individual tardies. Travis, again, is very high on tardies. He gives a mm-hmm. speech about it. He thanks the McDonald's <laughs> staff. Yes. Yeah, the bus him. schedule. Yeah. I feel that. His parents. Um, his parents. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Travis, man. And then when he gets to share, she negotiates her two tardies, saying that she was late one after, one morning because she had to go to the bathroom because of her period. And he drops that one. And she comments I mean, that... he can't argue with that. Yeah, what's he gonna, really can. What's he going to be like, no, you weren't on your period? Right. Right. And if he asks for proof, like, bro. Right. Like, how am I supposed to prove that to you? Do you want me right, to link like... up? Do you want me to get out my uh, period tracking app and like right, <laughs> show right. you? I have comments on how I was feeling that day, what I was craving. I got you, okay? <laughs> and Cher comments that Miss Geist was right about him being an intelligent man. And he that gets him all flustered. Back at home, Cher is called to her dad's office because she got a second notice for three outstanding tickets. How does she still have that car? Honestly, I don't know. How did they not impound that car? Yeah, right? Three tickets? Three tickets. And I wonder what they were for. And she doesn't even have a license. Right. Because she's all like, where was my first notice? And he was like, it's the tickets. So were they for like parking or what? Because if she got one while she was speeding, then she would know. Yeah. Right? Yeah, she would know. So Cher's dad is very upset with her. And he says that she can't drive without a licensed driver with her, which she should have been doing from the get-go. That's the law. (laughs) Cher then goes to bother Josh and tells him uh, that she cannot drive without a licensed driver. And he reluctantly goes and supervises her. Mm -hmm. Did you notice during the scene how gorgeous her pool is? Oh my gosh, yes. I would sell my firstborn for just a chance to swim in that pool. Honestly. It was so nice. It's so beautiful. And I bet the water felt amazing. Uh I bet it was temperature controlled. I was about to say that. I was about to say that. Like if it's hot outside, it cools down a little bit. If it's cold Mm -hmm. outside, it warms up. I just Mm -hmm. know it is. And honestly. At night, the light package they have going on there. Amazing. I mean, they even have a water feature that goes into the into the pool. Like, yeah. If that's not luxurious, that's my dream pool. Like, I don't care about a giant house. I just want a really nice. Yeah, pool. yeah. Like, I would do with a really nice, modest house and then a, a kick-ass pool in the back. Yeah. Yes. I've always wanted a pool. I grew up with a pool. It's very nice. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> So in the car, Josh tells her to drop him off at school because he has a class to get to. And he jokes that it's a tree planting ceremony and that maybe Marky Mark might go. Oh, that was a joke? He was joking? He was joking. I thought he was being serious. I was like, wow, no, Mark Wahlberg being... is coming to the <laughs> tree planting. No, he was, he was joking. Oh, okay. That makes much more sense. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know who Marky Mark is, that is Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, we don't stand him. He committed hate crimes. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, Cher makes fun of him, but Josh says that maybe Marky Mark wants to use his popularity for a good cause. Cher tries to say that she does um, do good work 
and good things for other people. But that actually gets her thinking. So at schools, like lunchtime the next day, Cher asks Dion if she's ever been super selfish. And Dion's like, I would never say it to your face. Yeah. <laughs> and asks, <laughs> and she's asking just because Josh uh, got her on that train of thought. They're then distracted when they see Mr. Hall. Dion and Cher go to him and Cher gives him a flask of coffee saying that she mixed up her lemonade Snapple with her dad's very fancy coffee and gives it to him with the idea that he shares it with Miss Geist. Then they gang up on Miss Geist. I don't know how quick they were to get from Mr. Hall to Mr. Geist in whatever part of the school she was. They have powers. It's fine. Yeah. They then gang up on Miss Geist and they give her a quick little like makeover wardrobe change uh, while she asks them to sign up for the environmental fair. They make her look a little bit better and then they make their way to PE. On their way to PE, they see Mr. Hall sit with Miss Geist on a little bench and they hit it off. He gets her number. And then after that, Mr. Hall and Miss Geist are super happy with their relationship. They're and they're making gives... out in the parking lot. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's it really ve- is. It's very inappropriate. Yeah, especially on, on campus like that. Yeah. And like how they were doing it. It was just yeah. awkward all around. But for some reason, Cher and Dion thought it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, because of their happiness, it gives students a break from their homework and an improvement in grades. And it leads to Cher getting a round of applause at lunch. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they all found out that she yeah. was the one that got them together. But... How they found out, but Mr. G- but, uh, Miss Geis and Mr. whatever his name Paul. didn't. Right. That's weird. Like, I feel like they would have found out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they don't care. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they don't. So then Cher's grades are sent to her house and her dad opens them and looks at them and she's got all A's. And he discusses them with her. He asks if she did any extra credit work or redid any tests. And she says that she actually negotiated them. And he gets super happy for her and super proud. At PE, like the next day, through a voiceover, Cher says that she felt good about helping get Mr. Hall and Miss Geist together, but she wants to do more. Cher and the other girls don't want to participate in PE. And they give multiple reasons not to participate in uh, tennis when a new girl Ty shows up and some of the girls make fun of her but Cher convinces Dion to adopt her into their little group and make her over how Ty Cher- didn't think that they were setting her up for something I'll never understand like she was just yeah. separated. okay she was very trusting yeah she wasn't even a little skeptical about what was happening she just immediately was like cool right. we're friends now right like she don't tell me she did not see the looks from every other girl and was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to fight my way through this day. Yeah. <laughs> and then immediately gets called over by two girls and you're like, oh yeah, I'm totally friends with you. Instead of like, I don't know what is going on here, but I don't like it. I don't like it. Right. I feel uneasy. Right. So Cher calls Ty over and asks her to hang out with them. Um, she's she, Ty makes some like weird drug jokes about her, them having coke there at the school and whatever was it a joke i don't know i thought she was dead serious she was dead serious and sharon dion didn't understand what she was talking okay, about. okay because because um so she said something about it was like an innuendo to weed but yeah but they thought she was talking about tea because she said herbal yeah. something yeah dion was like we don't have we don't have tea but we, tea, we don't but we have, but got we have coke, coke. And, and then her, t- her Ty's face, like, you got coke? Yeah, her face is lit up. <laughs> she really <laughs> thought Cher's they were going to do coke. <laughs> and then I love Cher's answer. She's like, duh, it's America. <laughs> this is America. We have coke. She's everywhere. like, duh, of course we got coke. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like some tech bro lunch. It's a Beverly Hills high school. Yeah. You're not gonna yeah. be doing coke. I mean, not probably not on campus, probably no. off in the woods somewhere at your really nice fancy cabin, but it ain't happening on, on campus. So after PE, Cher and Dion show Ty around the school and show her the different groups that they have on campus. Um, she points out Alana's group. They're stuck up and they do the TV station. There's the Italian mafia that you can't hang with unless you got a beamer. And then the popular boys that includes Elton and Murray. 
Dion points out that Murray is her boyfriend and Cher tells Ty that those are the only acceptable boys to date on campus, anybody part of the popular group. And when asked if she has a boyfriend, Cher says that high school boys just aren't for her, which any other boy would be illegal now that I think about it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Mary then shows up and asks Dion for money from her and the interaction impresses Ty, which it really shouldn't have. Yeah, because what he said was not true. He mm -mm. said something along the lines of me calling you woman may have um, misogynistic undertones, but it doesn't have to be misogynistic. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much what he said, but he said it with, like, more eloquent words to like confuse people yeah 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 he's he basically called her woman and then when yeah. she called him out he's all like i may call you derogatory names that may have girl or woman in it but i'm not using it in a derogatory way blah 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 yeah i need money <laughs> and then she's <laughs> like she's okay like, okay i love you uh, yeah that's what that's what you're at when you're 15. I want better for T.R. I actually Honestly, want better for though, I want better for all of these girls. They're all victims honestly, in one way or another. They really are. So after that, Ty leaves to go to the calf to get them some coke. Yeah. <laughs> and in the calf, she's in line and she runs into Travis and they hit it off. They're talking about her drawings and stuff like that. Ty then goes back to share Dion and excitedly tells them about her interaction with Travis and says that he even offered her a smoke. Mm. Mm. Oh. Cher then gives her advice saying that she shouldn't hang with Travis and the and the drug group because that won't get her anywhere in life. Which True. 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 <laughs> True. Cher then asks if Ty can come over to her house so that she can um, give her a makeover. And Ty is kind of reluctant, but she says yes, because she's so excited to finally have some straight friends. Yeah. What does that mean? Right. But okay. Right. <laughs> but, but like any other sexuality wouldn't give you a makeover? Yeah. <laughs> Stand. So back at Cher's house, they give Ty a makeover. They wash the red dye out of her hair. Which How cheap was that dye, that dye? Yeah. Was that like a daily kind of thing where you, it's a spray on or whatever, and then you wash it out at night? Because that was it not had to be, hair dye. Because literally all they were doing was wetting her hair, and it was just falling it was out. It was coming out. Hair. Yeah. And she has brown hair. So, and that red was really, really bright. So she, yeah. that must have been something temporary. Yeah. Because I, I have red in my hair, and I am a natural like black brown hair, and it's this is permanent. <laughs> I have to wait to cut it off. So they give her, um, they do her hair, they put her in makeup, and give her some new clothes. Then Sharon and Ty are working out, but Ty get gets tired and they quit. And Josh watches them from like the kitchen area. Sharon says that they need to work on Ty's. Um, like speech, the way she talks. Yeah, they, they're gonna Eliza do little her. They like, yeah, they are Eliza do littling her. They don't like the way she speaks with her New York accent and uh -huh. she doesn't know any big girl words, so they need to work on that. Like sporadically. Sporadically, which she uses <laughs> kind of incorrectly. Yeah. <laughs> she had the right idea, but it was not executed correctly. No. So Cher gives her some books to read, a workout tape and stuff like that. Josh walks in and Cher makes introductions between the two. And then they both go to the kitchen. Josh says that Cher is just using Ty as a project because she's bored and she just likes to um, brainwash people into being her like little cronies. While Cher just says that she's being nice because she's helping out somebody new and being her friend and stuff like that. At school the next day, everyone is staring at Ty because of her new transformation. And well, Travis she didn't goes look over. All that different, just had better clothes. Yeah, she didn't have the red hair and just different clothes. That was the only difference. Yeah, <laughs> she had and clothes a, that and, fit a, her. and a little bit more makeup on. Yeah, yeah. Travis then goes over to them, invites them to a party in the valley. Ty wants to go, but Cher and Dion talk her out of it. 
and trying to get close to Travis. Yeah, because um, apparently it takes an hour to get to the valley. Yeah. And if you drive all the way out there, by the time you get out there, the party is going to get busted by the Over. police. Yeah. So there's no point in going. There, there's no point in going. Also, the valley is for hicks and, <laughs> and yeah. not... <laughs> this is a this is a different valley than our valley. LA, yes, it is. LA has its own valley. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, then, there's two different then, valleys up here. And then Northern California has a valley that's like mm-hmm. in between Northern California and Southern California. Yeah. And then Southern California has like its own valley. Mm-hmm. It's where like Van Nuys and crap is. Yeah. For those of you who aren't from California, this might be very confusing. <laughs> yeah, you probably have no idea what Van Nuys is. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. There's there's many parts to California. <laughs> yeah, and then like on like the right side of California, what what side is that? West on the west side of California, it's like just sand, like nothing but sand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Sand it just gets before, barren. Yeah, it's just sand before you go to one of the other states. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Cher then has a plan to get Ty with Elton so she let, she doesn't focus on t- uh, Travis and says that Elton told her that she that he thought Ty was cute, even though he never said such a thing to her. Mm-hmm. Cher is then taking pictures of the crew and uses that time to try and get Ty and Elton together. And from the outside, it looks like Elton is kind of kind of crushing on uh, Ty. Is it? Because he calls her well, he calls her cute and stuff, and to share it looks like there, there's something there. I'm more, I'm more perspective. I have more of a perspective than share. Like I, yeah. I have more brain cells. I, I'm older. I, <laughs> <laughs> I um, I'm more socially aware. Mm-hmm. So I could see the fact that. He did not care. There was nothing that. going on there. <laughs> there was nothing going on there. She, he was just doing whatever Cher told him to do. That should really have, though. That should have been like clue number one that he don't like. There was her. something. Yeah. 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 So that night, Ty and Cher are having dinner together. When Cher gets a page from Dion, but her dad won't let her take it. But when her dad gets a call, she takes the call from Dion and she tells Cher that Elton has a picture of Ty in his locker and they decide to go to the party in the valley because Elton Mm -hmm. and the other guys are going. Drive an hour to go to a party. Drive an hour to go to a party. It's not worth it. Uh, I would never do that. Yeah. And did you see how late it was already when they were leaving on their way there? Mm -mm. I mean, I know it was like Christmas time, but like it was like pitch black. Yeah. And we all know the sun goes down at like 3.30 during the winter. Yeah. Oh, goodness. If it's dark outside, I'm not going out. Uh. Honestly. (laughs) (laughs) So at the party, Cher gives Ty advice to make Elton notice her and want to hang out with her. Ty notices Travis and Cher instantly tries to steer her away. Mm -hmm. But Travis says that he'll go get them drinks. And so when he comes back... He spills them on Cher's shoes and she's super upset about it because they are now ruined and he gives her drugs to make up for it. It's only weed. Don't say drugs like that. Like the way you're saying well, drugs. Chronic. It, chronic. The, the way you said drugs made it sound like he gave her like a rock of cocaine. It was like, here you go. <laughs> I mean, they don't do coke. She said they had coke. Mm. Mm. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Take time Coca-Cola. to thank our sponsor, Coca Cola. Yes, it's time to thank our sponsor, Coca Cola. Now with fifty percent more Coke. They're bringing back the original recipe. Yeah, original original <laughs> recipe. <laughs> you know how they did like the new Coke? Yeah, mm-hmm. the, yeah. We're going back yeah. to the original, back to basics. Yeah. yeah, like how everything is like. You know, everything comes back eventually, like styles and stuff. Yeah. Now the drink recipe is coming back. Now cocaine is back in style. Now cocaine is back inside Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so good. <laughs> Cher then notices Elton and gets him, uh, gets like his eye contact and notices, and he notices them. So he comes over. He, when he's somebody... dancing like an epileptic robot. It's so bad. <laughs> he can't dance. <laughs> They make I wasn't fun- really watching him dance. They make f- 
like later on in this movie they make fun of Josh Josh's da- dancing, but Elton's mm-hmm. dancing was worse. Maybe it's that that straight person thing, that straight white person thing. Possibly. Maybe it's the fact that I love Paul Rudd and I can just forgive anything he does. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that that was my reason. <laughs> It's Paul oh, Rudd. Oh no, 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 no. There's one thing I will not forgive, but yeah, whatever. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so somebody suggests they play Suck and Blow, which I've never heard of outside of this movie. What? What? What is Suck and Blow? The card game that they're playing. Oh, I thought when you said play, I thought a song, and I was like, what song oh. was called? Suck? No, no, I meant the game. What was the point of that game? Uh, it like kind of like spin the bottle, seven heaven kind of thing. Okay. You drop the card when you get to the person that you're like, oops, like I kiss, I dropped the card now, I have to kiss you. Uh. Okay, that's Elton yeah. Strike Two. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> because he can't ask for um consent, and he never will. No. So. Anyway. They play suck and blow and like it goes through everybody in the line until it gets to Elton and he purposefully, accidentally, whatever, drops the card and he has to kiss Cher, which she totally pushes him away from because she doesn't want to kiss Elton. We then hear Diane. Uh, Diane. Diane. Wow. She aged, she aged like 50 years. And became a white woman. <laughs> Dion screams and Cher and Ty go to where she is and they see that Murray is getting his head shaved. It's not even that bad. It really Honest, isn't. Honestly, there was barely a difference. Yeah. Like maybe his, you could see the actual shape of his head, but it yeah. wasn't. And then she threatens to call his mom as if his mom won't find out when he gets home. Right, right. <laughs> like what is he going to do when he gets home? Wear a beanie forever? Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 90 degrees outside. He's like, right. hi mom. He's still got, he's still got that beanie on. <laughs> <laughs> so the party continues and Travis and Ty hit it off again and Cher has to go and break it off one more time and tries to get Elton's attention on her by dancing with one another. But Ty gets hit in the head with a shoe while she's dancing and gets <laughs> not, like pushed down to the floor by the force of the shoe. That's not the most ridiculous thing that happens. In this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it really isn't. So Elton goes over to, to help her. Uh, they bring her to the kitchen and lie her down on the counter for some reason. Yeah. And Travis, Travis tries to help, but Cher pushes him away. Ty feels somewhat better. And um, Elton asks if she, uh, she's feeling better. And she proves it by like singing along with the song and dancing. Oh and so he takes her. Homies. Iconic and... moment. Terrible song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He then takes her back out to dance. Cher then has nobody to stay with during the party and says that she's okay with it as long as her friends are happy and getting along with one another. She then gets a call from her dad and he says that he wants her home in 20 minutes, but she says that she's in the valley. <laughs> where Where is her father going that takes 20 minutes in LA? He's, right. like, he's like everywhere in LA takes 20 minutes. And I'm like, where in LA are you going? Right. And how are you getting there? Because if you're getting there by via car, you're not getting there in 20 minutes. He must take helicopters everywhere because honestly. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's a weekend, is it not? Right. Like you ain't right. getting nowhere in 20 minutes, right. sir. Right. And it's nighttime. Somebody's always having a party somewhere. Somebody's yeah. always trying to get somewhere in LA. He would be, so lucky. be traffic. He would be lucky if she got back in an hour. Honestly, though. Anyway. <laughs> Um, she tells her dad that she won't be able to make it home in 20 minutes, but he says that she better find a way. But since she got there with Dion and uh, Murray, she can't, and she can't drive. She has to find somebody to go home with. So she leaves with Elton and Ty, and when she go, goes out, she tries to get Ty and Elton alone. But Elton drags her back to his car multiple times, saying that they're going the same direction, and it wouldn't make sense to make the other car like detour to her place how did how does she not know at this moment that elton liked her 
Yeah. He was he was coming up with every yeah. excuse in the book for her to get in his car. Also, yeah. he has he has kissed her multiple times mm-hmm. for no reason. Yeah. Unprovoked. Yeah. It started off as like kisses on the cheek for no reason. Mm-hmm. And then we had the whole smooch. Yeah, yes, yeah, smooch earlier in the party. Yeah. So while Elton and Cher are driving, Cher tries to talk about Ty with Elton, but he's not listening to her and he makes a move on her and she pushes him off saying that she, like, she's not into him and like, what about Ty and stuff like that. But he says he was never going for Ty, that he's never liked her, but he likes Cher, that he likes her. He doesn't actually like Cher. He, no. he pulls a, um, what's that guy's name from Legally Blonde? Warren? Is that his name? Warren, yeah. He pulls a Warren from Legally Blonde. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm-hmm. do you know who my father is? I need to end yeah. up with a certain type of woman and blah, 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 blah. But it's, yeah. like, it's like reverse Legally Blonde. Like he doesn't want like the smart girl. He wants the pretty. Yeah, yeah he just, just wants the pretty girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wants the trophy wife. And, and he deserves she- one. Yeah, it is. Let let him have any anybody with the sports would not get with a man like him. Let let him have a woman with no substance. <laughs> yeah. Let him be let him be bored for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> so Cher is not into it, and when he tries to make another move on her again, she gets she says to let her out of the car. So Cher gets out, and he tries to make her get back into the car, but she's not having it, and so he did leaves. he did he. Well, he gets irritated and leaves her there. Yeah, he left her in the middle of God in the middle knows of where. Yeah. In the valley. By herself. So By herself. So now with Elton gone, Cher tries to call a cab company, but she is held at gunpoint and she is robbed. Mm-hmm. And the, man so makes her, the man makes her get on the floor, even though she is already seeing his face. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, but, like I mean, they're, Cher... they're looking dead at each other and he's like mm-hmm. get on the floor and count to 100 i would have been like i already no i wouldn't have said right. i already saw your face because like then he no. could have shot me but yeah, I yeah but i would have been thinking in my mind like i already saw you your saw face. your face <laughs> i mean Cher doesn't make a show of it either so no she was more worried about her dress, <laughs> <laughs> which I would low key feel the same. <laughs> um, so after she is robbed, she goes to a payphone and tries to make a call, but she doesn't know any the the phone number for the house that the party is at, and she can't get in touch with Dion or Murray. So she calls Josh, and Josh gets a call while he's with a girl and shares, you know, begging him to pick her up, and so he goes and picks her up. Okay, but he goes to pick her up, but she doesn't tell him where she is. Where, yeah. She she just says, I'm in Sun Valley. And he's like, oh, you owe me big time. And then hangs up. No mm-hmm. street, <laughs> no, no no street, no and cross like section, she, no nothing. She could have at least just said like the restaurant that she was right next to, right? Yeah, but she didn't. She literally just but said, she did I'm not. in Sun Valley. And then yeah. they hang up <laughs> and he somehow finds her. Somehow. So Josh picks her up with the girl he was hanging out with. Why the girl decided to go with him, I yeah, don't know. Why did understand. she go? That was weird. I would have been like, yeah, I'll just walk back to my dorm. Right. Like, I'm not driving an hour out to the valley just to yeah. pick up your stepsister. Right. That's weird. So, but him, Josh and the girl are having a debate, and Cher tries to participate, but she looks dumb. I, I can't say that any nicer. She just looked dumb during the whole process. Didn't she make a point at the end? Like, she did make a point. Like, like, she did it badly, but she made a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she there was a very roundabout way about making her point. Yes. Um, and, like, good the, for her, but. The girl made a quote, and she, like, was wrong about who said that mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And Cher knew the answer, but yeah. the way she did it was weird. Yeah, the way she went about it, it gave me secondhand embarrassment for her. I was like, oh, she was like, I know my Mel Gibson. Beauty. Homer never said that, and I was like, I was like, where where are we going with this? Right, right. And, and then right. she was like, wasn't it that guy whose name who starts with P? I don't know. 
I know nothing about Greek mythology. I, I'm sorry. Oh, Poseidon? It was not Poseidon. It was like Phileas or something like I don't remember. Okay, then. Was was not paying attention. Anyway. Um Josh then drops off the girl he was hanging out with at her dorm. And Cher thinks um about how she's going to tell Ty about Elton not wanting her. The next day, Cher and Dion then break the news to Ty. And to make her feel better, they decide to blow off the rest of school to watch a movie and get some food. Yeah, apparently in public schools, you can just leave. <laughs> yeah, you can just leave during seventh and eighth period and not, you yeah. know, no one's looking for you. Nothing or... happens. Yeah. Let me tell you what happens in my city at public schools. If you get caught outside of your school during school hours, like by yourself without an adult, you could get arrested. Yeah. So don't cut glass, yeah. kids. <laughs> don't cut glass, or if you do, be smart about it. <laughs> or be rich, apparently. True. True. So at a restaurant, the girls debate whether the guys around them are hot. And Ty learns that Cher is still a virgin. But Cher defends herself, saying that she's super picky with her so- shoes. So, of course, she's going to be picky with her men. Good job. Good for good, her. Good job, Cher. But also, why are they so shocked that Cher, a 15-year-old, is a virgin? I'm more shocked that Ty <laughs> isn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will. I would ask also ask if she was okay during any of that experience. Right? I was like, you're not? I would have been like, what? Right. <laughs> right. Were you safe? Or, like, are you like, okay? Like, you're younger than I am. Like, what's right. happening here? Right. Right. Do we need to call someone? Right. Ty then immediately gets sad because the song her and Elton were dancing to starts to play in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And Cher thinks that the only way to help Ty get over Elton is to find somebody to replace him. Yeah. Cher then talks about how finding um, a man in high school is is super hard because of the way they act, the way they dress, and a multiple of other things. When Christian, who is part of her class since the beginning of the semester, finally joins them. <laughs> you, you don't remember <laughs> from the beginning of the movie? The first semester, he's in Chicago or something. He, with, yeah, one of his parents. Yeah, and then second semester, he comes. Can he? Can they do that? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> but okay. like, when That's you have money, why not? Why not? They can probably afford the therapy he's going to need later anyway. And how annoying would that be to have to like move? That would suck. Every like what four months? Because you know the curriculum won't match up. It won't. <laughs> he probably will either be super ahead or super behind. <laughs> there is no in between. And so we see Christian and Cher is obviously super into him. And she says that she knows that she's supposed to be looking for a guy for Ty, but looking for herself wouldn't hurt. So Cher then sets up a plan to get Christian to fall for her by making herself look super desirable by sending herself flowers and chocolate and stuff like that. And after some time, Christian finally asks her to go out with him um, during the weekend. Cher's dad has a big case going on and he has to have Josh and some of his other coworkers at the house um, when Christian comes to get her. Josh goes to open the door for him because Cher wants to make the guy wait for her. Cher's dad then interrogates Christian when Cher comes down in her dress and she's looking super cute and Josh notices. Okay. Um, if Christian walked into my house the way he walked into Cher's house, oh, yeah. I would be in jail for attempted murder. What, the disrespect. What kind of disrespect was that? <laughs> what in the world? He strut into that house. Yeah. Just and like, then didn't say anything to anybody barged, until he was spoken to. Barged into the house like it was his. Mm-hmm. Was going to ignore Cher's father until he was like, who are you? What are you doing right. here? Right. And I love how unfazed Christian was yeah. at all of it. That would have made me more upset. Yeah. Because I'd then, want some sort of reaction. And then he puts his hands all over your daughter who is wearing a skin-tight dress gross no i would have been in jail i would have been in jail yeah so josh notices her dress and comments to 
her dad saying that she should be able to go out in such a tiny dress like that. And so Joe's dad says that she can't go out without putting something on top of it. And she puts on a sheer, <laughs> <laughs> sheer jacket. Why is that something I would do? Yeah, out that's, of spite. That's something I would do. I 100% feel Just that. Just to be spiteful. <laughs> so once they leave, Josh says that he doesn't like Christian and suggests to Cher's dad that um, he should go and supervise. And Cher's dad is like, you know what, whatever makes you happy. Cher's dad does so, not care. He's like, do whatever yeah. you want. I don't care. Yeah, he really <laughs> couldn't care less. So Josh decides to follow them to um, the club that they're going to. So Christian takes Cher to a club with a live band and they dance. Ty shows up to the club. I don't know how she found out about this. Does Cher tell her? I don't know. Anyway. Ty just kind of shows up. Places. Yeah, Ty just kind of showed up to this and it was kind of weird. So Ty shows up and she embarrasses herself by falling down multiple stairs into yes. the dance it was, floor. It was very funny. And then some old guy <laughs> comes up to them and is like, yeah. are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Poor thing. Ty then sees Elton and Amber together and uh, she's like, oh my gosh, he, you're, he's already with another girl. But Cher and Christian make sure that she feels better by totally ragging on Amber, which she deserves that. Mm -hmm. Ty and Cher um, um, notice that Christian is, super, is slowly falling in love with Cher with how he doesn't even look or interact with other girls. In They're the, saying in the this while he is flirting with the bartender who is yeah, a man. Who is twice his age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ty then notices Josh and he waves over at them and they wave back. Christian and Cher go back to dancing and Ty is left alone, which sucks. <laughs> Cher notices and feels bad for her until Josh comes by to keep her company and Cher feels better knowing that Josh is there to spend time with her. But the, the whole time Josh is staring at Cher and Christian while they dance instead of really paying attention to Ty. After the party has wound down, Christian is still wanting to party, which how late right. is it by the like, way everyone is gone like they're yeah everyone up, is gone yeah like the band the is the band is the only one that's left there <laughs> like you know that's at least two hours after everybody has left yeah and he's like um i just heard about an after party and they're yeah. like um no ty ty's passed out already and shares <laughs> like yeah no <laughs> shares like oh i have an early morning workout like gotta mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. so Josh decides to take Ty and Cher home and Cher says, tells Christian that he should go party by himself and that it's okay. So Josh and Cher talk in the car and they decide to get her dad and his coworker stacks to give them more energy while they work on the case. Voice over from, from, voice over from Cher says that she likes to stay home more than party because her lounge clothes feel a lot better on her than you know her party clothes, which I 100% get. Shares with Josh watching TV and they get a call from Josh's mom asking for him. But Josh is like, no, don't tell her that I'm there. So Cher says that he's not with him. Check the dorms instead. And she hangs up. Josh says that he's avoiding his mom because his mom's fourth husband wants to bond. And he is not interested in any of that. And Cher says that he could just stay at her house in his old bedroom and whatever. And nobody has to know. Okay. It was during this scene that like a light bulb like hit in my mind. So mm -hmm. he's all like, yeah, I don't want to go to spring break with my mom. And then Cher's like, yeah, just stay with us for the two weeks. I knew spring breaks used to be longer than a week. I knew it. Growing up, I was always so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go on spring break. You know, go out, have mm -hmm. fun, party for two weeks. And then I grow up and it's one week. Yeah, it's one week in college. I I knew I knew it was two weeks. I something something in my mind growing up told me two weeks, and then I was like, maybe I was wrong. But no, did we this, did we have did it. we have two weeks in high school? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a week. Okay. But because I feel like I used to have two weeks. No. They must have they must have used to be two weeks and then they cut yeah. them down to a week. See, Probably. I knew it. Probably. Everything bad always happens to me. It's fine. Yeah. 
Also, the school system sucks. Yeah. Public and private, so... Yeah, it doesn't matter where, <laughs> doesn't uh, matter. where you are. <laughs> I've done having both. More money, having more money does not help. I've done both. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a who's who. <laughs> If you, if you want to look better to colleges, I guess, go to private school. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're not planning on going to college, just yeah, just suck it yeah. up and go to public school. Yeah, really, though, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so Christian calls Cher saying that he wants to have a movie night with her and she's super excited to have some alone time with him. Cher then calls Dion and they spend the whole afternoon getting Cher in the house perfect for that night. When Christian arrives at her house, he notices that something is burning and Cher forgot the cookies that she was baking in the oven. Okay. And they she are totally not, burnt. She was not baking cookies. She threw an entire yeah. roll of cookie dough like into cookie the dough. oven. Like didn't mm-hmm. separate it. She just threw no. the roll in there. Yeah. She didn't even, yeah, she like unfolded it and it plopped on the thing. She's like, good enough. And just Trish, closed like, the oven. She was like, yep, yeah, cookies are that shape. And just threw it in. <laughs> insane christian is touched that she tried to bake for him but he's all like just show me his tour to your house instead so so she takes him on a tour and they're in the backyard by the pool and that backyard is super huge by the way gorgeous it's gorgeous it's so nice (laughs) and he really loves the artwork that um that is out there she tries to to suggest that they go swimming together and he's like no let's just watch the movies i brought instead (laughs) Let's go watch Spartacus. Uh, Why not? (laughs) What could go wrong? So they go upstairs to watch the movies and Cher tries to flirt with him and like make a move on him. And Christian, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So he says that he's tired and he leaves after a little bit. And after he leaves, Cher thinks that there's totally something wrong with her. Like her hair was flat or the lighting was bad on her. Mm -hmm. If he didn't want to get with her. The next day, Cher is with Dion and Murray as Dion tries to practice her driving. Cher talks about her night with Christian and talks about how she was almost going to have sex with him when Murray laughs at her saying <laughs> that <laughs> he's gay. Yes, Murray, Cher, had to, Murray had to tell them. Murray had to break it to them. <laughs> Cher and Dion are super surprised, but after a little bit they both realize that you know what he really is yeah gay. they're like they think for like two seconds and they're like wait yeah yeah yeah, yeah they start talking it through and then they're like you know what it actually does make sense it makes perfect sense <laughs> but while they are talking dion accidentally gets on the freeway and everybody freaks out yeah same same so did i the first time I drove <laughs> oh my gosh yeah the first time that i drove the freeway with my mom we were going to the mall in concord and it's like a 25 minute drive from my house that's a long drive for your first time on the freeway Mm -hmm. well no my first time on the freeway i was um i had my permit it was actually very illegal but my dad had work done on one other car and i was the only one home and uh we somebody had to drive the other car home so he's all like i'll go first you follow me And we'll make it home. That could have ended very badly. (laughs) Yeah, and I was driving a huge car. It was a huge car. And I was used to my mom's like really small car that I was used to practicing in. And this car was huge. And I'm just all like, I am 15 with my permit. I should not be driving. (laughs) But yeah, my first drive on the freeway with my mom, I my hands were so tight on that wheel. Like at one point I could not feel my right hand because I was squeezing it so hard. But I didn't want to let go and like get blood flow back in my hand because I was afraid of letting go of the wheel. So for 25 minutes, I don't think I felt my hands. And then I like when we parked, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. It was terrible. Wow. I wasn't that bad. I was, yeah, I was that bad. I just only like low key freaked out when like a truck drove past me. And then I was like, Mm. (laughs) (laughs) starts hyperventilating. All of the Final Destination flashbacks were like going through my mind. I was like, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop my water bottle, and then it's gonna get under my brake, and then I can't brake. Yeah, I don't even have a water bottle. It's just gonna magically. (laughs) It's just gonna happen. (laughs) You've seen Final Destination. It just happens. It really does, though. Maybe that's why our friend is is uh, scared of driving. You know what? She'll be fine. 
So Dion finally makes it off of the freeway and her and Murray make out because they are so relieved to be alive. Mm -hmm. And Cher says that Dee and Murray have sex later. (laughs) Yeah. Because I don't know why that warrants it, but you know, they're excited to be alive. (laughs) The adrenaline was puffing. Yeah, it really was. Cher then says that she wants a boyfriend because she is like missing out on like what her friends are having even though she does like hanging out with christian and all of her other friends right christian is pretty much a boyfriend (laughs) pretty much much. pretty much so christian Cher, and ty are at the mall shopping christian and Cher together and they notice that ty is missing and Cher is like oh she's hanging out with some guys that she found in front of the foot locker (laughs) which should have been a red flag but you know And uh, she is sitting on like the banister that they have like on the second floor. I literally so wrote down. on here, why is she sitting up there? Yeah, she was she was asking for trouble. She could have fallen herself. Yeah, it, it like it wouldn't have mattered if if the guys were there. Like if yeah. she was just sitting by, there by herself, she could have like I don't know coughed or sneezed or something, and then like let go a little bit and then fall into her. A death. slight a slight breeze could have came out of the H and M she was sitting in front right. of, and she was right. would have tumbled to her death. Right, like at, the problem was hers. She decided yeah. to go and sit up there. Everything that happens after this is her fault, partly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they see her hanging out. And Christian and Cher just, you know, start talking to one another, but then they hear her screaming. And they turn around to see that the two guys that she's hanging out with are holding her off of the banister, kind of. Yeah, over the edge. I don't know. Oh, yeah, they hold her over the edge. And Christian goes to save her. Christian makes sure that she's feeling okay, and they both go off together to um, get some R&R. And Cher thinks that she Ty has... know what that means, and that's funny. Yeah. She... <laughs> <laughs> Cher then thinks that Ty has the damsel in distress act down to a T. Because she does. And it's, tr- and it's true. Because the next day at school, Ty is the most popular girl because her story with her brush of death has grown to become something she, that's she was, remotely she was, not true she was being held up or something like that yeah yeah like she's held at gunpoint at the mall or something like that even though Cher was the one that was actually held by yeah, gunpoint. My gunpoint right <laughs> and can we just talk about the fact that Ty was actually probably safer with them <laughs> dangling her over the edge right. than she was the just sh- sitting there right because at least they were holding her yeah at least they were holding you her. know and then at that point, she was probably gripping harder for dear life, so she yeah. wouldn't have fallen. If she had just anyway. fallen back on her own, she would have died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ty has gotten so big that she doesn't even acknowledge Travis when he goes to show her something at the table and even brushes him off. Cher then goes to the table and sits down with Ty and everybody, and she feels like she isn't acting like herself. And thing and after that things are getting worse when she is prepping for her driver's test at home when she can't find her special outfit she then tries to talk to the housekeeper about it and it offends her by uh, assuming that she's mexican and yeah. saying that she doesn't speak mexican mm, yeah that's all problematic but yes josh tries to explain it to her about why she was wrong and Cher doesn't want to hear it because she's just she's like in her own little head thing like oh everything's my fault and stuff like that so during her driver's test she's distracted with um the things that Josh told her like when he was trying to tell her that she was wrong and she almost hits a biker she swipe side swipes another car and that leads to her failing and she can't talk her way out of this and she was driving in two lanes and she yeah yeah and, so just, Cher goes, and the guy was being so nice he was like can you please just get over to the right he really was though he, he was so patient with her he was i would have lost it and then she hit that car and he was like oh no <laughs> oh <Yeah>. no <laughs> yeah. i love how he was willing to forgive her almost hitting a biker but the yeah. minute she swi- side swiped into the car he's like that is it <laughs> yeah i'm not trying to like protect you from that so Cher walks home and she feels miserable failing 
She finds Ty and Josh in the backyard. And when they ask if she got her license, she tells them that she didn't and that she doesn't want any back talk about, you know, how stupid she is for not getting her license. Ty says she is there to burn the stuff that she has that reminds her of Elton because she is totally over him now. <laughs> also, also, the stuff that she has that reminds her of Elton shouldn't be that much stuff. Yeah. But she somehow has a full like little shoe box full of stuff. Yeah, she has so much stuff. <laughs> she had like what? One interaction with him, really? And yeah, that was at I the think- party. No, two interactions, one discussion. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they took photos together. Oh, true, true, Like, true, true. the day before. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure she didn't even know his last name. <laughs> Probably not. So, Cher says that she's super happy for her and wants to know what got her over Elton. And Ty says that she's into Josh now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ty, ke- <laughs> Ty keeps talking about Josh and how great he is and Cher tries to talk her out of it which that's fair that's fair um I get that Ty is a, fair. I get that Ty is a kid but why does mm-hmm. she fall in love with any boy like literally any boy true like if he talks if he, any any if, guy that like looks at her talks to her she's she falls head in over love heels. With. Mm-hmm. I want to get a degree in psychology just so I can help her I just I really need to help her through her insecurity problems yeah and her abandonment because she just latches yeah it's it's my life's mission now (laughs) you need to diagnose and uh treat every uh character that we have uh, talked about in all these movies so far oh absolutely because so far every one of them has needed therapy in one way yes in one way or another Mm -hmm. some more than others like Ty really needs it Ty really needs it Mm-hmm. we're gonna start with the fact that she was not a virgin at the young age of 15 we're gonna start right there what yeah. was going on there <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway uh ty gets super offended because um she thinks that Cher thinks that she is not smart enough to make her own decisions and blah 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 and then she calls Cher a virgin who can't drive Iconic and line. That, iconic. <laughs> iconic line. Iconic. <laughs> You're a virgin that can't drive. <laughs> Jared draws the line at that saying that she was super harsh and Ty apologize, apologizes, quote unquote, before leaving. Cher then realizes that she kind of created a monster in Ty and decides to go out to clear her head. On Rodeo Drive. <laughs> On Rodeo Drive. <laughs> If, how far is she from Rodeo Drive if she can just walk? I don't think Beverly Hills is that far away from Rodeo, is it? Is it? I'll look it up later. Feel- we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You keep talking. I'll look it up. Okay, good. So, voiceover from Cher, and she's saying how she's been wrong about a lot of things recently. Um, and that Ty being into Josh is really throwing her off. Oh, it's very close. Is it? It's a three minute drive. Like it's very close. It's a twelve okay, minute so walk. Okay, so she could. So she. Okay, yeah, she could definitely walk. She could do it. Okay. So then Cher buys something because she has a uh, squirrel, a squirrel mm-hmm. moment. Um. Then Cher goes back to talking about, you know, Ty liking Josh, and you know what, how good a person Josh is, and how you know, Ty could fall in love with somebody like that. But it's still rubbing her really wrong. And she finally realizes that she's in love with Josh. Mm -hmm. Her coming to this realization while all by myself plays in the background is hilarious. It really is. (laughs) (laughs) Whoever edited edited that deserves all the money they got. Right, right. All of the like anxiety riddled, like I need to go out walks that I took in college. Mm -hmm. If I could have that kind of thing going on behind me, I think I would have been so much better. (laughs) Just all by myself playing in the background. (laughs) So many things could have been realized. Right. You know what? The next time I need to take one, I'll just quietly have uh, all by myself just playing in like my earphones. Yeah. Is there like a YouTube loop of it? (laughs) So I could just constantly have it playing. Exactly. So... After she makes her realization, Cher doesn't know how to act around Josh because her usual acts of getting a guy to notice her and like her, she can't do on Josh because she knows that they won't work. 
Sharon Josh are watching CNN and he calls out how weird she's been acting because she's watching, you know, CNN and not hanging out with anybody and not watching but Beavis she says, and Butthead. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> but she says that she's fine. That night, Cher is pacing in front of her dad's office and he finally calls her in and she asks if he can help what um, the case that he's working on. He gets her to highlight some calls on some cases in September and she asks her dad for help on how to get a guy that isn't into her. She says that she doesn't feel worthy because he's such a good person and blah, blah, blah. And Cher's dad is like, you know what? You are actually a very good person because you take care of me and you take care of this household. She's and a good person. I'll he is she, a good person. I'll say she's a good person. She's yeah. She's just a little narcissistic, but like overall, yeah. she's a good person. Yeah, overall, she checks the good person button. Yeah, uh, checkbox. Um, the next day, Cher still is in the headspace that she wants to become a better person, and she realizes that her friends have really good qualities that she could learn from and stuff like that. And she's in class with uh, Miss Geist and she's talking about the Pismo Beach disaster. And Cher volunteers to be the head of the Pismo Beach disaster relief program. Cher then gets things from her house that she doesn't need anymore to donate to the school, like from food to skis and skis. stuff like that. Yeah. Which her reasoning wasn't, it wasn't wrong. that bad. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Technically, like you know, somebody could need it. But like in the moment, do they need it? Yeah, do they need? Yeah, that's more of a maybe after you donate food, water, and clothing, yeah. and immediate needs, then they might want the skis. Yeah. After <laughs> after they start rebuilding, then you can start yeah. giving away your skis. Yeah, yeah. So at school, Cher is organizing the donate the donations. Um, when Travis comes by to donate some stuff. <laughs> Oh, Travis, my boy. <laughs> Does he donate anything other than uh, a bunch no, of hookahs? It's all bongs. Oh, bongs, yes. One of them yeah. is made out of a, a little honey. Honey bear. bear. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes you're just desperate enough to, <laughs> to just make one yourself. Travis then apologizes for messing up her shoes at the party. And when she asks why, he says that apologizing is part of his 12-step program that he's on mm. currently. Which, good for him. It's good not what him. you think, though. <laughs> it's not what you think, though, but he wants to be better. Travis then invites Cher to his amateur skating tournament, and she decides to go. At the tournament, Ty is there and she apologizes for being mean the last time they were together and Cher apologizes for not taking her feelings uh, for Josh seriously. Mm -hmm. this, is another, this is another how did Ty get there? <laughs> it really is because I thought what? she wasn't even like hanging around Travis. Yeah, why was she there? <laughs> like, How did she hear about this? <laughs> they then watch Travis skate and Cher sees did that they? like <laughs> they did they did they totally did they, they sat no, down I and mean, watched I mean I mean literally as soon as like so on the top of the half pipe you see Travis and then as soon as the person moves it's a stunt double and like the body shape oh. is different they don't okay, even try, yeah they barely try to hide the stunt devil's face it's so bad <laughs> you know what sometimes you just gotta get it done it's so bad oh my gosh i the only time i've seen worse stunt double or probably it's not, probably not worse like just as bad was in the falcon and the winter soldier i'm so sorry but when um what's his name sam mm -hmm. when sam's character was flipping around i was like that man looks nothing like him <laughs> Well, I've seen, I've yeah, I've seen his the the double for Sam, and he does not look anything. He looks nothing like him. I was like, like, like I was him. like, y'all couldn't have like panned back a little bit. Like, I can see that man's face. <laughs> like, please. Right, right. Also, if you did pan out, you could get more of the action. Yeah. So maybe that's a good idea next time you start yeah. shooting stuff. For the next season, let's let's work on that. Right, let's work on that. Also, it's 1995. What are they going to do? I mean, sure. Sure. <laughs> so after Travis is done, Ty and him share a look and shares kind of sees it. 
there it looks like they're going to be friends again so later sharon and josh are helping her dad's case and they're flirting with one another when one of his co-workers asks for the august files Cher has then made a mistake by continuing highlighting stuff from September and that just makes the guy go off. He calls her um, a moron for messing up everything that they're working on because it's a huge case and whatever. She then storms off and Josh tries to stand up for her. Okay, but, but like that- he should have because like did they tell her to highlight August? Right. Because if right. not, like she's death- just, if not, she's just going on the last information that was given to her. Yeah, and that was from the the uh, her dad who yeah. is running this case, so yeah. he should know what he's talking about. If no it's, one told her otherwise, that's not right. her fault. It's not her fault. Don't make my no, girl just, cry like that. Right, frick you, bro. He was an asshole anyway. He was. Because he he okay, so the worker storms off and he says that he's calling in sick the next day. Like you're gonna ignore this problem and then call off the next day, right? That's not gonna make the problem go away. It really isn't. It's just gonna make more work for somebody else. <sighs> so I after he men. leaves, right? When is the thirty first? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so um. After he leaves, Cher asks Josh if she really did mess up the case. Josh reassures her that she wasn't because he was. she was just helping them out and that was really nice of her. He then asks why she's been helping out when she could be shopping or doing other stuff. Cher then takes offense by saying she's, you know, is that all she really does, shopping and look pretty and stuff like that? And Josh backpedals saying that she's beautiful and could be out doing something else other than helping them. Josh says that he's there helping her dad because, you know, it could be good for his career or whatever, and that her dad's the only one that cares about him. But she says she also cares about him and goes to hit him. And then he kisses her. Mm, yeah. Um, the semi incestuous relationship is not it. Not for me. Mm-hmm, it's a no from mm-hmm. me, dog. No. Yeah, it's a no from me. Um, yeah, even if you're not blood related, if you grew up together in the same household, that's weird. Yeah, if that's you called weird. each other's parents mom and dad. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Also, how old is Josh? <laughs> let's, yeah. let's get into that also. Because yeah. that's that's yeah. always glossed over. How old is Josh? Yes. Because she's 16 Too at this old. point. Too old. How old is he? He's, we know he's in college. What year yeah. of college is he Yeah, in? exactly. Because even if you go off the first year, that's, that's 17 or 18. Mm, that's still weird. That is very weird. And were their parents <laughs> just okay with this? Right. I, I don't know. We really need to sit all white people down and have a very stern conversation. <laughs> we like, we... No, we're not doing this no, anymore. No, we're not. No. Sweet home Alabama. It's it's giving it's giving me um uh inner inbred royals like that's oh, no, no 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 more yeah. of that no more of that yeah no we're nope. done with that. So Cher is surprised after they kiss, but she um, gets over it and they kiss again. Uh, Cher's voiceover says that we know what happens next and we see a wedding, but it's not for her. <laughs> it's for Mr. Hall and Miss Geist. Surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> Later at the reception, Cher, Ty, and Dion are planning their weddings and Josh, Marie, and Travis are scared because, you know, they're, they're 16 and they're planning their weddings already. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, is not bad to, to fantasize about, you know, yeah. because, you know, cute. But like it's a little scary when you're 16. Personally, I don't think anyone should be allowed to get married until they're 25. But that's just me. That's <laughs> just me. That's yeah, right. right. Just me. Because like, doesn't your brain like not even finish developing until you're like 21? Right. And, and then so like you also need to get some money. So like let's just wait a while. Right. Right. Why are we in a also, rush, people? You... Right. Right, like, do you know who you are, like, it's outside just, of work and school? Yeah, it's just a piece of paper. Let's take our time. <laughs> Let's take our time. Also, I'm not marrying you before the three-year mark. Oh, yeah. 
I'm not marrying you before the three year mark. And people who get married without living together, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? I know there's religious people who like don't want the temptation of sex, but like just don't do it. But like also yeah, just don't. like um right. yeah, let's let's live together at least a right. year. Right. Before that happens because you have to give because you have to give the relationship time to like loosen up like when you first Mm -hmm. move in together you're going to be on your best behavior for a couple yeah 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 I say Mm -hmm. give it at least a year that's when all the bad traits will start coming out Mm -hmm. but you could see if you can live with that person definitely definitely the the worst thing that could happen to me is I marry someone and then I find out I don't like the way (laughs) they live (laughs) And then you're stuck with them. And then I'm stuck with them. Yeah. That because I awful. said till death, baby. I yeah. said till death. Yeah. If I get married, I'm staying married. Like that's just, yeah. just how it's going to happen. Really though. Right. You want to leave you me, wanna... go to the other room. Right. <laughs> right. Go visit your friends for a weekend, but you're yeah. coming home. But you're coming home. Okay. I'm not signing and then any we're gonna divorce. Talk... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You, can, you can print them out all you want. You can get them to me. Mm-mm. Yeah. Unless I'm thanks, getting, but no thanks. Unless I'm getting married for tax purposes, like if I'm getting married for like a real reason, like I'm staying right, married. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> their PE teacher comes by uh, to get them because the bouquet toss is going to happen soon, and Josh stops Cher before she leaves, saying that they have a bet going on and who will catch it to give her motivation. Why was he so excited for his ex stepsister to catch this bouquet? Someone called the cops. <laughs> <laughs> where's my red flag his Just, he's so excited for his 16 year old ex-stepsister stop. to catch the booth okay well, i'm anyway i'm dialing 911 right now <laughs> this happened like 30 years ago and i'm still dialing 911 <laughs> so share dion and ty go to the the group of girls and share ultimately catches the bouquet and her and josh kiss and that's the end of the movie cops are here (laughs) (laughs) Uh, okay i'm gonna hit you with some movie facts okay i'm ready um there were two other girls who were offered the role of Cher. do you want to guess who like hmm let's see this was the 90s i almost said Lindsay hope lohan that would have made absolutely no sense (laughs) that would have made it worse (laughs) um i'm trying to think of who was like young in like the early to mid 90s because i wanted to say jennifer aniston but i don't know Mm-mm. yeah i feel like she would be too old um one is more tv the other is like movies is one of them cameron diaz no no okay Hmm. I'll give you a hint. One of them was in our movie last week. What movie did we watch last week? <laughs> it was your movie. <laughs> Jordan. That's not helping me. <laughs> what movie did we watch last week, Kelly? Rut Row. Oh, Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> Sarah Michelle Geller. Okay. She would have been good in that movie. She would have been and good. Then, and then we have one more. Uh was Mich- was Sarah Michelle Gellar the TV person or the movie yes. person? Okay. Yes, the TV person. Um, Jennifer Love who you at? Um, who else? No. Um, Drew Barrymore. Mm, well, um, that's kind of on the right track. Oh, okay. Um, what what movie was this woman in? One of the movies this woman was in. You know what? I'm. Um, you know what? I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing a song, and then it'll. I hope. Hopefully, it'll jog your memory. There, right there. Look at that tan, well tanned skin. Look at the killer shape he's in. Look at the slightly slightly chin. Oh, please, he's gay. Totally gay. No, she couldn't have done this. No. <laughs> Who is it? It's Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. No. You don't think so? No. <laughs> okay. Because all I'm doing is picturing. L Woods in this movie and it doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> it oh, doesn't okay. work. No, okay. no. Okay, no. That's fair. No. Okay, Paul Rudd auditioned to play Christian and Murray, but he ultimately ended up with Josh. 
Paul Rudd cannot play gay. I'm sorry, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> Maybe he could have done Murray. Maybe. 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 If they completely <laughs> changed the character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you some other actors who auditioned for this movie. Jeremy Renner auditioned for, Chris, for Christian and Josh. Gross. Terrence Howard and Lauren Hill <laughs> ran for Murray and Dion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would have loved if Lauren Hill was in this Lauren movie. Lauren Hill, yeah. Oh, that would have been cute. Okay. Owen Wilson tried out for Travis. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Leah Ramini auditioned for Ty. Don't know who that is, but okay. I didn't either. I don't. I she's. The, Wait, from Leah Ramini? Do you mean Leah Ramini? <laughs> Bye. This episode. See is you over. next episode. <laughs> Bye. <sighs> anyway, whoop. Um, and last but not least, Zoe Deschanel auditioned for Amber and Cher. She was acting then? I guess so. Wow, what do I... Th- How old is Zoe Deschanel? I don't know. Wow, she's much older than I thought she was then. Mm-hmm. I thought she was in like her early 40s. I don't know. If not like late 30s, early 40s. Don't she tell looks me, young for her Don't age. tell me this woman is almost 50. Oh my gosh. Please don't tell me this woman is almost 50 No, years she's old. not. She's not. She's 41. How, how would that have worked? She would, uh, she would have been like 17. 16, 17, right? This movie came out like what, 25 years ago? 95. Oh, she would have been 15. Yeah, how would that have worked? I mean, she would have been the right age. She would have like, she would have like, she, wow, I can't speak. She would have looked like a baby compared to. (laughs) era. Can't parallel park. (laughs) Okay. All right. We're moving on. So the um, Fox passed on producing this film and a lot of other major productions passed on this film, partly because of the romance between Cher and her stepbrother. Good. Yeah, good for them. Good. I have good so much them. respect for Fox now. Wow. Yeah. Paramount yeah. can choke. <laughs> <laughs> Never getting Paramount Plus. Never getting Paramount Plus. <laughs> Sorry, iCarly reboot. Yeah, I apologize. But that was the only thing they had going for them anyway. I would just really though. I'll just find it online illegally. hmm This movie was inspired by Jane Austen's Emma. Have you seen Emma before? I have not seen Emma. This is basically Emma, but like in the 90s. And the style was inspired by Gidget. Have you seen Gidget? What is Gidget? <sighs> Such a good movie. It's, it's in black mo- and white. Oh, it's a movie. I thought it was like a singer or is something. Is it in black and white? No, no, no. It's a movie. It's a movie. Okay. Surfer Girl? No? No. Doesn't ring any bells? Okay. No. So this is going back to um, the debate scene at the beginning of the movie. So Elise, uh, Alicia Silverstone, Silverstone, I don't know, my brain. It's anyway, Silverstone. Silverstone. She didn't know how Leo to correctly. Ramini? Stop. <laughs> she didn't know how to correctly pronounce Haitians in the classroom scene. And director Amy Heckerling told the crew not to correct her because she liked it so much and wanted it to be in the film. So that was actually all Alicia Silverstone. Why didn't she ask? <laughs> I don't know. When you're reading the script and you don't know how to pronounce a word, you're just going to make it up? You're not going to ask someone? I I don't know. But yeah, Hadians was all her. That's sad. I feel so bad for her. Because <laughs> now, now, uh, now she's probably like, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably. Poor thing. <laughs> But that's it for the movie facts. So, iconic or not. Despite the inappropriate relationships in this movie. Just all around. All around mm-hmm. inappropriate uh-huh. relationships. This uh-huh. is a iconic movie. It's very... Of course. It's like pinnacle 90s. Mm-hmm. One, of, one of the most popular 90s movies. Yeah. 
and it gave me Paul Rudd. So I will be eternally grateful. <laughs> Honestly, I love Paul Rudd. He's such a good actor. I love uh, this movie. Iconic. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure this movie made as if a popular phrase. Honestly. And for that, I am thankful. Right. You've got the iconic wardrobes and the outfits. You've got as if. You've got mm -hmm. a, a virgin who can't drive. Mm -hmm. You got totally bugging. Yeah. We love this movie. We love this movie. Hate the ending, but you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's problematic, but. Problematic. Uh, Very problematic. <laughs> but it's iconic anyway. Yes. So, reclamation, reclamations. Reclamations? Reclamations. Reclamations for this week? Yeah, she's giving me uh, reparations. <laughs> <laughs> Recommendations this week. Okay, I have two. My first one okay. is Phil's Coffee. I had Phil's Coffee yesterday for the first time yeah. in years. Yeah. And I it was delicious. That. Mint mojito all the way. Mint mojito, baby. Let's go. Um, and then my second one is the TV show, The Center. Very good. Please watch it. You'll love it. Mm. I think I've mentioned it before. Jessica Biel is in the first season. It's good despite mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Dang. If you want some good acting, watch season two. You can watch any of the seasons. They're like not connected. So like you can, oh. watch, you can watch any of them. Season two is my favorite. Okay. And then I was supposed to start season three, but then it didn't happen. So I need to start season three. I'll start when I finish Grey's Anatomy. I'm almost done. I'm, on, I'm like on season 11. Oh, okay. So you're close. I'm close. Okay. And I'm and after after uh, Arizona and Kepner leave, I'm not watching anymore. So I think I have like one more season. I don't even know who those are. Because <laughs> that's when the show starts getting really bad. Oh. Like Christina's gone already so, yeah so, she left uh, she left a while ago didn't she she left last season and so okay. it's already rocky but after <laughs> i don't know what happens but after kepner and um arizona leave <laughs> oh buddy it gets bad like this the episode we had last thursday was almost unwatchable i no don't know it was so bad. I was rolling my eyes like every 20 seconds. I was like, what's happening here? What happened to they this keep, show? Why, why are they keeping this show alive? And then it's like just, Meredith. Just they, mercy kill her. And then they just renewed it for a, a 18th season. No, we're not. You know what this is going to turn into? This is going to turn into like days of our lives. All, all my I, children. All I know is pain. Yeah. All I know and is suffering. Pain. Do people still watch days of our lives and all our children? I mean, it's still on TV. So. I know it's still on, and I know it's still on because they play it in like lobbies of like doctors' offices and at the mm -hmm. gym and stuff. But like, do mm -hmm. people actually like watch it? I, I like don't keep know. up with the storyline and watch it. There's no way. I have no idea. Because how would you even start? The show has been on for like where 40 would you years. even start? Yeah, <laughs> right. Like I used to watch it with my grandma, but like how <laughs> he doesn't even watch it anymore how how would you even i really want to know how would you start watching that show right do you just also, have to do you just have to start what on one episode you? and keep going what would convince you right do you just pick a season and go i think you would have to because otherwise you're watching 40 years of tv <laughs> i want to see i want to see how many like seasons there are of like all my children oh i'm guessing 42 <laughs> okay that's my guess <laughs> 42 seasons you know when it started 1985 1970 oh my gosh that's you know wow. what all my ch all my children actually ended it did yeah there is a god got it 2013 <laughs> oh yay <laughs> and there are 22 seasons of all my children mm-hmm Okay. What about like General Hospital? Yeah, I was about I think, to look up General I think, Hospital. I think that one is still on. Unfortunately, one of them is still going. It's still going. General Hospital. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was still going. Okay. So this this started in sixty three. You're kidding. I am not. April first, nineteen sixty three. That's a joke. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Oh. April. 
<laughs> yeah. You want to guess uh, how many seasons? Uh, 37. No. Am, am I too high or too low? You're, t- you're, you're low. 46. A little higher. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. How? Yeah. What is the number, Kelly? It's 58. What? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. What are yours, Kelly? My recommendations. My first one is a podcast that just started. It's called Distractable. Um, three of the guys that I watch on YouTube that do gaming, this is their uh, podcast, but it's not gaming related. It's literally, you know how we go on these tangents? That's literally that podcast. Oh. <laughs> they have a topic and then it literally just slowly deteriorates into madness like this podcast does. Yay. It's really great. Our people. <laughs> Our people, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. The second episode just came out. So you can, it's easy to catch up. It's really good so far. (laughs) (laughs) And my second recommendation is a song by Bella. I don't know. Say her last name. Porch. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Build a bitch. I've heard about that song. Bella Porch. I don't want to say porch, but the, my mind is saying porch. Really good song. One of the girls that I follow on YouTube, she's in the music video. And it's a good song. It's a bop. Go listen to it. Okay. And that's all for me. So I just found out the longest running show, television show on TV is The Simpsons, which is still going on. The what? The Simpsons. You don't know what The Simpsons is? Oh, The Simpsons. Yes. I I, I did not know what you were saying. You going deaf, <laughs> Grandma? The... <laughs> I'm like, senses. I don't know. <laughs> and the second is I'm Law like, and I know Order Sense8. SVU. Oh, yeah. I can see that. But yeah, The Simpsons has been on since 1989. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. It has 706 episodes. <sighs> Jeez. Wow. Um, Jeez. And people are apparently still watching it. Yeah, people still watch it. I don't know how, but <laughs> they are. Ooh, Family Guy is getting up there. They're like number six. Oh, really? <laughs> they're, they're two above Grey's Anatomy. Like wow. It, it's Grey's Anatomy, NCIS, and then Family Guy. Oh, yeah, NCIS. I, ha- I hung on for a long time with NCIS. I've never seen NCIS. Um, yeah, we should probably go now. Thank you. Yeah, we really should. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. If you've gotten this far. If you've gotten this we say far, that every time, but we mean it every time. We mean it every time. You really deserve your military discount. Yeah, I do. Like, Kelly's lighting has changed dramatically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. Have. And uh, my drink has gone down very far. Yes. So uh... Uh, I have to edit this, and I. Yeah. Oh goodness. Okay. Um, don't forget to follow us on our social media. We have a Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> They're both at Sytyi Podcast. We also have a YouTube. We can listen to old episodes. Mm-hmm. So you think you're iconic? Just look that up. You'll see it. Um, you can also send us an email. Our email is Sytyi Podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, send us movie stories, send us movie requests, send us whatever you want. And whatever you want. Tell yeah. us uh, how you feel about the whole uh, stepbrother and share relationship. Mm-hmm. If Tell you, us if you can relate. If you can relate, I will block you. I don't know how to block people from listening to your <laughs> podcast, but I will do it. Just know that every time you click on it, we'll feel, you'll feel our judgment. Yeah. Just, I'm going to post a picture of me just staring wildly. And yeah. you just keep that in your mind. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll we'll caption it, you know who you are. You know who you are. You know exactly who you are. You know exactly who you are. Uh, share us with your friends and your family, unless you like share and... 
Unless your parents together. are Cher and Josh. <laughs> yeah. This is this was a borderline flowers in the attic situation, but like not as traumatic. Um, is that what that was? It's, is that what that's like? What? That movie, the flowers in the attic. Bro, if it wouldn't completely ruin me mentally, I would make us watch that movie for this podcast. Oh no, <laughs> no, please, I'm okay. Um, this movie's enough. Yeah. Um, subscribe to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yes, or please. Wherever you listen. You know, we're not judgmental. We don't. I mean, we are, but like we, yeah. but, we don't. Uh, we don't care where you listen. Yeah, we don't care where you listen. That's we not what we'll listen. judge you for. Yeah, we'll judge you on everything else. Anything else? Uh, but you could judge us by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> yeah, so you judge us, we, we judge, judge you. you. It's a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic relationship. Yeah. We love it. You scratch our back. We- we scratch, we scratch yours. yours. Yeah. Um, also, don't forget to wear your mask. Yes. I don't know please. what's going on with the CDC. Don't listen to them. They're they're drunk. <laughs> don't. Mm. Yeah, a lot is going on there. A so. lot. A lot. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, there's there really a, is. A lot to unpack. Just think when you walk into the store or wherever you're going. How? Yeah, you're vaccinated and. Only people who are vaccinated should be walking around without their mask on. And then remember that a lot of people don't care. Just yeah. remember that. Yeah. There's no way to tell who is vaccinated, who isn't. Just remember that. No. Yeah. And then you'll be walking around with fear in your heart like me. Yay. <laughs> also, wash your hands. There's a lot of people who don't wash their hands. Yeah. And wash your mask, please. Yes. Please. Please. Otherwise, you're just spreading germs all over your face. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't and do stay, that. Stay iconic. Stay iconic, y'all. Bye.